morning in our last week of class. And just a couple of announcements before we get started. And the travel band is leading us and we'll hear from President Reese this morning. But a couple of announcements for you. There are these guests activities in the tunnel. If you've not seen them already, fun things each day to kind of take a break and relax. Uh, CSP Ministry is looking for chapel hosts for finals week. The chapel stays open until 3 a.m. during finals week. Yay, lots of snacks and good stuff for studying. So, but we need students that will help us host so we can keep the chapel open during that time. And lastly, maybe you've noticed, especially if you've been here in past years, there is a couple that comes and sells olive wood. Um, carvings and things like this during Christmas time. And their names are Mike and Sharon Kowas. They've been good friends of mine through the youth of the world for a long time. Well, Mike passed away this year. And I saw Sharon in the tunnel this morning and said, oh, we're so happy that you're here. I didn't know if I get to see you this year. And she said, yes. This was one of Mike's favorite places to come. And get this. He's been having a table at Concordia for 46 years. He hasn't missed one. So I thought that was an uh, interesting story for us this morning. So go say hello to Sharon. She's amazing. Maybe you can find some Christmas gifts there too. All of them from Holy Land. Uh, so let's just take a moment and greet each other with a sign of peace as we begin our chapel.
Second Peter, chapter 3, words that may be familiar to some of you, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. This is our word from the Lord today. Well, the old stories are usually the best, and in the odd chance that there's one person in this room who hasn't heard this story, I will repeat it again. There was a Concordia University student some years ago sitting in his residence hall room who read this verse for the first time. A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day with the Lord. And he was so excited about that that he actually shouted it out loud, Lord, is it really true that a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is as, if, as if it were a day? And to his amazement, the Lord spoke orally and said, yes, that's true. That got his attention. And uh, this was a sharp young man because the next thing he said is, well, if that's true, is it also true that a penny would be just as if a million dollars to you, Lord, and a million dollars as if a penny? And the Lord spoke verbally again and said, yes, that's true. And so the young university student who had a very high ACT score when he came to Concordia said, then can I trouble you for one of those pennies, Lord? <laughs> and the Lord answered out loud, certainly, just give me a day or two. <laughs> I love that story. So, we are in this season of Advent which has to do with the theme of waiting. And it is waiting on the Lord. And we have a dual theme, if you will. First of all, there is the church that longs with waiting eyes for the coming of Jesus, who promises us that he will return and take those who have been claimed by grace with him into everlasting life. And we are all waiting for that day and have been waiting now as we mark time, for almost 2,000 years, since the moment that Jesus ascended into heaven and uh, said, I'm coming back. Now the church, over the centuries and the millennia, has often waited with great anguish, especially when things get difficult. And this has happened in the church many times, and it's happening in the church today in many parts of the world. Why ah, is it taking so long for this return when we know there is a promise for relief from suffering and eternal joy that waits all those who have been claimed by grace? And it's no wonder that the church becomes anxious. And these people that Peter was writing to were anxious because they were under the gun, as it were, and persecuted and they complained and said to Peter, why is this taking so long as if they only knew that it would be thousands of years after they asked that question that Jesus still has not returned as we mark time. So Peter wisely under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit said, did he just relax? Kind of like Aaron Rodgers, just relax. Because a day is like a thousand years thousand years is like a day. What an encouraging thing to hear, and how encouraging it is to come together as the body of Christ, to share our misgivings and our disappointments that Jesus is not back, but also be encouraged together around the Word of God and these kinds of promises that come from sacred scripture. So the church has that longing. But then there are 
longing cries of the individual like you and like me. The things that you are waiting for in your life are different than the things that I am waiting for. And I don't know what's first and foremost on your mind, what you're longing to see, what you're hoping will happen. Uh, I would share my list with you, but you probably don't care. You're more interested in your own, and that's right and good. What is it that dominates your thinking, that is in your heart and mind that you can't shake, and if only you would have some response from the Lord, and then you can see and rejoice and you promise, and you say, come Lord Jesus to me personally, so that I may have rest for this one issue that nags me like no other. And the beautiful thing is that the promise comes to each one of us individually. A day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is a day. God does not mark time as we do, but you can be assured that he has not forgotten. No wonder we love Advent. Especially when it is seen as the birth time, the preparation for the birth of the Christ, who came into the world, offered his life as a sacrifice for our sin, was raised again, and then leaves us with these magnificent promises never to forsake us and always to come back. Several uh, weeks ago, I was in a different city, and I was uh, at a banquet, and the speaker was a man named Charlie Plum person whom I had never heard of before. And when Charlie Plum was introduced as the speaker, the first thing we saw was his silhouette on the stage, and he was pacing like that. And then he turned around and paced back. And uh, everyone wondered what this was all about. And then Charlie Plum said that uh, those three paces, the eight feet represented in that stride, those strides, were where he spent 2,103 days in a prison cell in Hanoi, Vietnam. Having been shot down on May 19th, 1967, while leading the raid over North Vietnam, five days before he was scheduled to return home at the age of 25. Eight feet by eight feet was his little prison cell, isolated from everyone else. And uh, he got into that cell and the first thing he did uh, even though he was a trained naval officer, was to complain. This is not my fault. I didn't start this war. I didn't manufacture that poorly made airplane. I shouldn't be here. There's got to be somebody that's answerable for this. And he didn't know how he was going to survive. And of course, all kinds of uncertainty in front of him. Thank God he didn't know it was going to be 2,103 days at that point, or he probably would have given up. But he said some interesting things. The first is that that eight foot by eight foot cell was not his biggest problem. His biggest problem was the eight inch by eight inch prison that existed between his ears. And he quickly realized that unless he was going to get mastery over that eight, foot, eight inch by eight inch prison cell, he wouldn't be able to survive the eight foot by eight foot cell, nor anything else that was going to happen. And uh, he said this change of mind was something that every person has to do for themselves as they wait. And I've learned that that's true, never so dramatically as that, but perhaps you 
have to. If we're honest with ourselves, we must decide individually that we will wait with confidence while we wait. That was the first thing that he shared. The second thing, he shared many things, but I only have time to share a couple more. The second thing that he shared is that while you are waiting, it is so important to be in touch with other human beings. Waiting, the waiting game is not a solo activity. And the first thing that he ever, first time he ever realized this is he was in this cell for about a week by himself, isolated, kept intentionally apart from each other, not able to talk to each other, communicate to each other, these other prisoners, had no idea who was there or how many. But about the seventh or eighth day, a little tiny wire appeared under the wall of that cell and wiggled back and forth. And on that little tiny wire was a piece of toilet paper. And he went and picked up the wire and the toilet paper, and he opened it up and it read, memorize this code, and then eat the toilet paper. And of course, he memorized the code that the other prisoners had developed, a way to communicate with each other which would go on for over seven years in that prison camp. How they could bond with each other and share words of encouragement and empathy. And they passed to each other words from scripture and even had Sunday worship together, though they never met for worship at any time. They learned how to be a community in these most dire circumstances because waiting is not for the lone ranger. It was a beautiful, beautiful story. And emblematic, emblematic of what God means, intends for the church. That we are together as we wait for the Lord and bear one another's burdens. Well, a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. But do not overlook this one fact. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promises. And may that word encourage you in whatever you wait for in this Advent season. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for these words of encouragement that we have from your holy word. And thank you so much for each other. That as we wait, we wait not alone, but in the presence of others who wait for you and look for you with confidence and with hope. Sustain us when our hope flags, when our confidence fades. Encourage us when we need a special word of encouragement. And grant us that kind of faith, which is built through adversity to strength upon strength. We ask these blessings in Jesus' Oh, and peace, sir, the Lord.